that, let's see, next Sunday, which is bagging day, um, we usually have a meal then that's a fundraiser for children's camp. But we're going to change that next Sunday to a fundraiser for Seth. He'll be leaving for Boise, Idaho on the 18th. And uh, I'm going to miss him. I know a lot of people are. I'm going to miss him for a lot of reasons. One thing is just about, of course, since he started a job, that changed. But just about any time I ever call him Seth, he was able to help. And uh, I don't have anybody to take his place. Now, if there's anybody out there that'd like to, we'll just sign you right up. But uh, Seth and I have done a lot of things together. Uh, matter of fact, I, and I'm not bragging on myself, but Seth said he'd never been to Sonny's Barbecue. What a shame. But brother, you can't say that now. We have been to Sonny's together. But Seth's going to come and share a little bit about what his mission trip's going to be about, and then he's just going to preach the Word of God to us. So, brother, come on up here and do that. I want to thank you all for letting me speak one more time before I leave for Idaho. So, if you would please open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke. Chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 2. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 2. Now, after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. And he was saying to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Let us bow our heads and pray right now. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful, wonderful day. You have given us to come together to worship and fellowship with one another. Lord, in our state, in our county, in our country, around the world, your harvest is ready, Lord. But there are few workers who are willing to go out. Lord, as we dig, as we dig into your word this morning, will you please show us what we must do? to go out and start harvesting for you, Lord. In your holy name, amen. In this passage, um, Jesus Christ's following has gotten to such a size that he is able to send out um, ambassadors to the cities that he is going to come to. And in this passage, he has sent out 70 and pairs of two. He tells them to go to the cities of Samaria, tells them to go and preach his word. And a couple verses down it says, saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. They go out, they preach. In just two weeks now, I and a team are leaving to go to Boise, Idaho, which is not out of this country. It's not a foreign place. But in many aspects, it is our Samaria. When we go to Boise, Idaho, we are going to plant a church among a group, group of people called the Basque. Now, the Basque people are originally from Spain, northern Spain, southern France. And, you know, over the years, over the centuries, they have you know, immigrated to all sorts of places around the world. But in Boise, Idaho, there is about a rough population of about 16,000 Basque people. That is the largest Basque community 
outside of Spain and the world. And as of right now, there is no evangelical church among them. There is no one trying to reach them. Of a people group of about 16,000, maybe 2% claim to be Christian. And of that 2%, maybe 5% of that 2% are evangelical, born-again Christians. Now, the reason we are going to Spain, to Boise, to, to minister and to plant a church among these people is because the pastor and family that I am going with were originally missionaries in Spain to the Basque people. And in the early early year, and early of 2021, um, Pastor Matthew McDonald, who's the one I'm going with, he and his wife took a trip out to Boise for some conference or another and found out that there was a large group of Basque people. And the first thing that they asked was, what's being done to reach them? And the head of mission, uh, mission the director of missions for the Utah Idaho Baptist Association said nothing. There, there is no one. There is no church. There is no one planting the church. There is nobody ministering to them. There is nothing. Then, in July of 2021, I and a bunch of other student students of my age took a mission trip out to. Idaho for two weeks. One week we were in a small town called Salmon, Idaho. Then the second week we were in Boise, Idaho. And there we went out and met Basque people, learned a little bit about them. And while I was out there, I saw exactly what they were talking about. The West of the United States today is a spiritually dark place, especially the states of Utah, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, maybe even Nevada and New Mexico. That Those states are not only spiritually dark, but in those states, the most prominent religion and I use that term loosely, the most prominent religion in those states is the Church of Jesus Christ and his Latter-day Saints, Mormonism. In every town that you will drive through in those western states, there will be a Mormon church. And in any town that has a high school, on the campus of that high school, there is what they call a seminary. But in truth, it's just an after-school activity, basically, where anyone who wants extracurricular credit can go there, and they are taught the, the fundamentals of Mormonism. When we were driving through Idaho up to Salmon. We drove through one town. There were no churches whatever, except for a Mormon church. When we go to Idaho, we are going to a place that knows little or nothing about Jesus Christ, or what they do know about him, it's only uh, through Mormonism. We are going to be ministering to people who think they are all right the way they are. And they may not accept at all the gospel that we bring. We might be rejected. We might be turned away. We might even be hated. There will be times where we will be so discouraged and wonder, why did we come out here in the first place? 
then before the service started here, I was sitting on this front pew and I got thinking about the song the choir just did. The opening lines to the chorus, turn around and see. Look what God has done. I did that this morning. I looked back over the past year, year and a half, and I started to see the work God had started to do in preparing for this mission trip that I'm about to go on. He put Brother Matthew McDonald in Boise, Idaho at the right time to see that there is work to be done in Boise, Idaho. Not only in Boise, Idaho, but in the whole state. He has brought people into my life who have a love and a desire for mission work. A love and desire to tell people that they are horribly lost. But there is a way to be found and there is one who is willing to find them, take them in, and love them. He, Jesus Christ has put on the hearts of many churches, including O'Brien Baptist Church, to help support this mission team, either financially or through prayer, to help us in Boise, Idaho. God has worked out every detail so far. He has provided us with a home out there, with contacts. He has also provided me with a job that I thought that I wouldn't be able to have. God has worked everything out to the T. When we get to Idaho, it will be at least another year before our, we officially start our church. But already we have a church. And the name of our new church will be the Chea Church. Now, as you all notice, I am wearing a black t-shirt with a round circle on it. And on it, I know you all can't see it, but it has the name Achea Church, Boise, Idaho. Now the word Achea, it's a Basque word, and it means home. The, ch the church in Boise that we will be planning will be called Home Church. We want these people to know that the church is their home. It is a place where they can find love, comfort, and shelter. We want them to know that it is a place that will take broken people in and we will love them and care for them and we will minister to them and we will show them that there is one who even though they are broken have been disregarded by the rest of the world have been thrown aside but there is one who loves them no matter what who is willing to send his only son to die for the sins and the mistakes they have made. No matter what. I am a laborer who is going out into the harvest that is plentiful and ready. There are a few of us who are going, and the Lord be praised that there will be more who will be coming. The Lord has gone before us and prepared for us. I'm not saying that this will be easy. It will be far from that. But with Jesus Christ, all things are possible. We can do all things through Christ who has given us the strength to do them, no matter what. The race to Boise, Idaho has begun. It will be long. It will be hard. It will be uphill. It will be downhill. 
There will be mountains in our way. There will be valleys to be crossed. But with our faith in Jesus Christ, we can move those mountains and cross those valleys I am happy and glad to know that I have the love and support of my church here, O'Brien Baptist Church. They have been so generous to me, all of you have, willing to set aside a portion of the budget to help support help my expenses in Boise, Idaho. The private donations from individuals. I can't tell you how much they mean to me. Turn around and see. That's all I can do. And just look. Just look at what God has done, not just for me, but for the team I am going with, for O'Brien Baptist Church, for all the churches in the Swanee Baptist Association. The Lord is working here. He is working also in Idaho. He is also working elsewhere. We just have to be ready to go out and work his harvest. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for sending your son to die for us, to pay for our sins. Lord, that was way more than enough. We did not deserve that, Lord. But now, through your grace, you are sending many of us to show your grace to others, Lord, who don't even know you, Lord, who don't even know that they are lost. Lord, as we go out, as we leave for Idaho in just a few short weeks, Lord, I pray for our safety and our travelings from Florida to Idaho, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will give us your Holy Spirit to comfort and to guide us Lord, you have given us your word to show us the way, Lord, for teaching, for reproof, for knowledge, for studying, Lord. I thank you for your word. And Lord, most of all, I thank you for bringing to light that there is a people, Lord, who are great sinners and who need a great Savior, Lord, just like the rest of us. Lord, when we go out, we will go out fully armed with the armor of the Spirit, Lord, the sword of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, Lord, as we go out, please help us to remember that you are with us always, even to the end of the age. In your holy name, most precious holy name, Lord, amen. This has never happened before in, in the history of this church. To me, that is just, well, like I said, we live in unprecedented time, and it takes unprecedented people to meet the challenge of those times. I've never been to Idaho, never had any desire to go. It's too far from the Sunshine State, but I have 
I've talked to Seth, I've talked to Matthew McDonald about the possibility of not this year, but next summer, taking a group of people out there and seeing what God is doing because they will have been there about a year by then. And uh, they're taking a group of people, let's see, this coming summer. Uh, but I told Seth I thought it would be better for our church and for us to, to wait at least a year, let them get settled, get some ministries going, and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm willing to go out there uh, simply because, can you just imagine if the state of Florida was as dry as it is out there? And I'm not talking about the temperature or the climate. I'm talking about spiritually. I mean, everywhere you go here, there's a church on the corner of some kind. And yeah, we got a Mormon church in Brantford. But they're just as wrong as the ones in Idaho. And folks, when they hear the story of the Jesus of the Bible, it changes everything. I think God's about to do something up there that, well, has never been done. And who knows what will become of it. Like Seth said, they may get out there and they may it may turn into something that well, not only is very difficult, but you know, how do you reach people that think they're okay? Same way you reach people here. You run into people all the time that think they're okay. Everything's all right. But they're headed for a devil's hell. And folks, I say this often, but I agree 100% with what Charles Spurgeon said many years ago. If they are bound and determined to go to hell, may they have to jump over us to get there. Seth's willing for them to run into him to keep them out of that awful place. Next Sunday, we're going to have the fundraiser, but if you have a little envelope like this one, you can put a gift in there. Uh, to help him. Um, if you're going to write a check, Sheila, it's probably better to make it to the church and then you take it from there uh, rather than to make it to him. Just do that. Uh, Debbie and I are still praying about what we're going to give because we're not just going to give once because I just don't think that's right. This young man's going and doing something he's never done before and our church has never been in this situation before. And you realize when you look at our budget, there is nothing in there about missions. Well, there's going to be. <laughs> there's going to be. Because, you know, Paul said in one of his letters that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, he said that to a church that was very poor. But that church outgave the bigger church. God can do that. I'm not worried about the amount, and I hope you're not either. Just let God take care of that. Um, so if you're willing to do that, at least have that ready by next Sunday if at all possible. If you can't do that, then that's fine. We'll be doing, we'll be supporting Seth uh, every month out of our budget. And uh, I'm very excited about that. When, when a church does that, and I'm going to shut up because he has said what he needed to say. When a church does that, God supplies their needs. He's not going to supply our needs if we do not support ongoing mission efforts like this one. And God's been good to us. I want him to continue to do that. So, with that said, yes, Somebody out there behind him and will help him in any way they can. And I'll give him that 
Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Would you go into the piano, please? Thank you. 